Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a juicy soap using this fabulous fragrance, Satsuma Orange from Nurture Soap. I've used this before. It's one of my all-time favorite citrus scents. Um, it's not just straight up orange, it's complex and oh, it's juicy and good. And it retains really well in a cold process soap after cure and it behaves well in a cold process soap. So those are all super like thumbs up from me. Um, for the color swirl, I'll be using this Tangerine Wow from Brambleberry. And it is a wow, it doesn't take much. This stuff is powerful and it's beautiful. And along with that, to kind of punch up that color, I'm gonna use Hollywood Pink from Nurture Soap. So it's gonna be just vibrant, bright, juicy, pretty. And I have these little um, embeds I made. These are actually cold process. Uh, I had some leftover dough and I poured them in a little citrus embed mold. Um, so I'll be putting those on top. I think that I'll do some piping. I'm still sort of formulating the plan, but we'll see how it goes, how far we get. I might do some piping with those oranges on top. Just want this to be vibrant, colorful, and fun coming into summer. I'll be using aloe vera juice for my liquid portion today, and I'll be using uh, mulberry silk fibers for my silk instead of Tussa silk. Um, Stargazer, Epic Stargazer, Cheryl, she sent me a, a sample to try and I tried it in an earlier soap, loved how it behaves. So I'll be using my mulberry silk in this also. So I'm gonna pull everything together and let's make some wonderful juicy Satsuma orange soap today. So I've got all my oils melted and cooling and my butters are in here. I've got my fragrance measured and I'm gonna add my additives in here now. I have my piping bags ready to go and you can see my tips here. Um, I just wanna fill in with the color swirls in between those orange slices that I have. So let's get this going. I've got organic colloidal oats here uh, and this is a two tablespoon scoop. These containers are from the Dollar Store or Dollar General, one of those, and they come with the scoop and this little flip lid, so they work fabulous. So I have my kale and clay in here. If you order your additives in bulk, these are very handy. Two tablespoons. Those in there, and I'm going to go ahead and put my essential oil, or not my essential, my fragrant oil in here because I know that this fragrant oil behaves perfectly and I want everything to be scented evenly. So it's just easier for me if I add it into the oils, if you know it's gonna behave. Uh, if you're not sure, you need to wait until you have your colors and blend it, but um, being a citrus, it slows things down, it behaves perfectly. So that's why I'm very comfortable putting it in my oils. And I'm gonna blend in my oats and clay with the um, fragrance here and let them sort of anchor and absorb into the oils before we add our aloe vera lye solution, which has the mulberry silk and sodium lactate. So I'm just gonna get these blended and let them sit for a few minutes and then we'll get moving forward. Okay, and I figured I'd just show you what temperatures I'm running at here. So this is 86 degrees on my oils. And I did have an ice bath on my aloe vera lye solution, so that's going to be a little cooler. It's 80, or sorry, 77 degrees on my lye solution, but um, you know, technically they're within 10 degrees of each other, and I'm totally fine with working with those temperatures. So, you know, it's relatively on the cool side. When I first started soaping, a lot of the books I read said to soap at 110 and 120. I don't like to soap at those temperatures. That's a little warm for me, personally. I like to work in the 90 to, um, you know, 79 to 95 degree range is my preference. Anywhere in that window, I'm happy. So, all right, got my gear on. We're ready to get our lye solution in here. And again, this has the mulberry silk, the, the sodium lactate. Oh, and sorry, I forgot. I put um, a tablespoon of cane sugar in here. Uh, and I'm not sure when to add it. I put it in after I added the lye, um, and it didn't. it's a little caramely color, but some of that's from the aloe. Um, I know some people add uh, sugar at different stages, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that what your ratio is and stuff. Um, it, it aids in bubbles. That's why I put the cane sugar in there. It dissolves in the lye water and it makes 
for a really nice bubbly soap in the finished product and you know it's soap I love bubbles so <laughs> that's why I threw it in there I don't do it in every batch but um, I threw it in here so if you hear background noise that is my fabulous husband he's doing some construction upstairs on my fireplace he's retiling the front of it so we're just going for emulsion and I'm going to split off here into my containers for our colors uh, and you see a little bit of a yellow cast that is from the fragrant oil that Satsuma Orange does have a yellowish tinge so it's not going to be a bright white soap but I think it's beautiful and it goes right along with the sort of the citrusy smell it doesn't bother me a bit all right I think we've got a good emulsion here so we'll split off into our containers and for the piping bags I'm going to set this off to the side here and we'll get our colors in here. I've got my Tangerine Wow from Brambleberry. <laughs> it is most definitely a wow. Let me see. I'm going to do that in the big one here. It is bright, vibrant. It's a strong color, but it's gorgeous and it sticks around wonderfully in cold process. I've had a couple of oranges and yellows really fade out on me um, and so this one, you know what, it's true blue. It's gonna stick around. All right, and here's my Hollywood pink. We'll get those blended in. And we can always add more if we need to. Let me get this out of the way. All right, let's start with this Tangerine Wow. Love the name of that because it's perfect. It is absolutely a wow. Got a nice light trace, so we'll hop on over here to our Hollywood pink. Ooh, pretty, pretty. So, um, this is a wonderful fragrance for intricate swirls, and I'm not doing a super intricate one today, but it slows down trace. So I blended each of these for, you know, a good minute each, um, and they're still very nice and fluid. So we're going to go ahead and get pouring. I'm going to do sort of a drop swirl and then run a hanger through it, and then we'll save off some for our piping bag. Oh, this color. It is so vibrant. So while I wait for my piping bags here to firm up, I'm going to go ahead and just randomly put these little orange slices around the top. All right, I think this uh, pink one is ready to go. So I think I'm just going to do like stars randomly around here. You 
what? These orange slices are getting buried. I'm going to actually pluck them out. And I'll put them down on top. I think that'll work out better because I have so much of the piping. Alrighty, now we're going to come in and redo this piping and we'll put our oranges on top. So it's the next day for my Satsuma orange and the top just went all kinds of sideways on me um, and it was my fault. The batter was perfect piping consistency but um, I saved off way too much batter and so when I started doing the piping I realized I was burying the oranges and so it's kind of a hot mess on top. So this is one of those loaves. I've had loaves that are so pristine and perfect on top that I hate cutting them. This one, I'm gonna love cutting it because I think each individual bar is gonna be okay, but not what I was going for. Oh, mercy, I just sort of playing it by ear there. But you know what? It smells fantastic today, and I'm gonna go ahead and steam the top and give it a nice shine, and we'll just, <laughs> you know, put a little lipstick on this bad boy and try to make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> it's messy, but uh, I'm hoping the swirls on the inside came out. It smells fantastic, so we're just going to work with it. So I've got my little handheld steamer here. This is just a laundry steamer from Amazon, and I'll link it in the description box below. And um, sometimes uh, I've seen soapers that will run their loaves under really hot water to get any soda ash and, br uh, soda ash and bring back a shine. Um, and I've done that before and it works great. I don't do it on all my soaps. Sometimes I just let them ride. But this little steamer here, you can see it going, I think, um, is great because I don't have to run it under the water. If you have botanicals or anything on there, glitter, and you don't want to lose it, you just steam it with a laundry steamer and it'll make it damp, but it'll also bring up the shine, get rid of any ash or dryness looking. So I'm just going to steam it here, let it dry for an hour or two, and then we'll slice into it and it'll keep it nice and shiny on top. And there, it just brings back some shine. So I'm just going to let this sit and air dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and get it out of the mold. It sat for a little bit. It's dry to the touch, but it still kept that shine from the steamer. So <laughs> trying to talk positive. I was super bummed about the top on this, especially when the piping was such a perfect consistency. This was a hundred percent maker error. The soap was behaving perfectly and this is on me that it got so messy on top. I just didn't really have a vision for where I was going and lack of planning. I don't know all that and a side of fries, but just trying to think positive here <laughs> but let's get it out of here and cut into it again that tangerine wow is super wow <laughs> it is such a pretty color it's super dynamic let's get this thing split and see what the inside is like maybe that will cheer me up a little these are happy colors right so you can't look at a fun soap like this and be bummed that's pretty kind of psychedelic and groovy in there. We're, we're liking it. Well, 
let's get into this guy and see if those uh, swirls on the inside make up for my mess on the top. Cut off my little sample piece. And these are between one, half, uh, one and a half to two ounces. Ooh, the swirls came out groovy. Okay, that makes up for it. <laughs> but anyway, I um, save these in bundles of four and put them together, and that's my little soap end bundle, um, different, different kinds, and people can sample. They make great little sample soaps. So, and if I have odd sizes from these, then I cut those in half and they're free samples. But anyway, that's what I do with these little end pieces. Okay, these swirls are cheering me up, right? <laughs> Let's get in here. It's hard to be too sad at these when they're so vibrant and pretty colored, right? It's, I mean, these, oh, look at that. That makes me smile. Even that little wispy swirl there, too. Okay, that makes up for the messy top. And once I get these cut into bars, I think the tops are cute. Um, they just didn't make a very majestic looking picture altogether. But, uh, ooh, those are nice on the inside. And again, this Satsuma Orange, it retains the scent. And oh man, it's a good one. Really good one. All right, let's keep going. This cheers me up. Honest to goodness, last night after I put this in the mold and got all done, I just sat and stewed about it, thought about all the things I could have done different. Got a little air bubble with there, air pockets, but I'll fill that in when I do the side trimming. I'll show you how I fill that in. But those swirls are pretty jazzy. They make up for it. Yeah, I think that's one of my <clears throat> personal biggest downfalls is um, I'll overthink things after the fact and I should think them through before the fact. I think I would save myself a lot of anxiety with a little bit of fore planning and not as much um, afterwards. Oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. So good learning lesson for me. These are happy bars. They're kind of psychedelic, like 60s. Woo! <laughs> feel like groovy, baby. in a good sort of way, <laughs> not a trippy way. All right, and again, that tangerine wow from Brambleberry. Come on now, that's pretty cool. This one has a little hole. Sometimes when you do piping on top, um, you get little air holes. So I'm gonna show you how I fill this in. So I go ahead and shave down my sides with my super high-end soap shaver, <laughs> AKA it's a KitchenAid vegetable peeler from Amazon. They're very inexpensive. And I like this because it's sturdy and it makes a nice even bevel. So this is just the one I use. So, all right, you got your fresh shavings and they're still kind of pliable a little bit like a soap dough. You don't want to wait too long because these will get stiff. So that's why I usually clean up. So I made the soap yesterday. Uh, it's been about almost 24 hours. I cut them, let them sit for an hour before I come in and bevel and stamp. So I made my little soap dough plug and I'm simply gonna stuff it in that hole and rub it off and no more hole. So it just aesthetically, I think it's a little more pleasing and um, yeah, so that's how I fill in any little gaps. Let me see if I can find another one here. Let's see, there's one in there. This one has kind of a big hole, so we'll fill that one in. And this has a little purple in it, so I try to find colors that sort of match. This has a little purple, so we'll mix that in there too. And make a little kind of soapy dough plug. Fill it in there. And if it doesn't match perfectly, it's fine. So I got most of it. I still have one teeny little spot to get. And there, no more hole. <laughs> 